So we're going to take a look at level processing. This is following on from my first video, um, which I'll ha add in the links if you haven't already seen that. But what we're going to have a look at is how specifically um, non-contact uh, level measurement devices analyze the signals and uh, ensure that they're picking up on the, the right contents. Um, the same could be uh, said for, for technologies such as guided wave radar, um, they're analysed in a very similar way. But we're con we're, we're, we're focusing on uh, ultrasonic and uh, uh, radar for, for, for this particular example, not uh, guided wave radar. The first thing we've got to understand is what we're actually looking at when we look at an echo profile. And what you, you tend to have is a, uh, on, on PDM or the mobile IQ app, you'll have a, a trend that goes from left to right, where on the left hand side, um, that's zero meters. And then on the right hand side, it's, it's your empty distance plus uh, a little bit of uh, far range extension. And what you can see on the on the blue line, we have a transmit signal, and um, then we have uh, uh, something that uh, we refer to on ultrasonics as ring down. So this is normally uh, on ultrasonics where the near blanking comes into to account. The signal then drops to its its lowest point, which we call the noise floor. So ideally, that that noise floor will be zero decibels. So the value on the uh, on the left hand side, the, uh, going vertically, um, the y axis is uh, decibels. Okay, so what happens then? It's, it's easy to understand with, with sound. The signal travels through the air, this clicking sound that you can hear from an ultrasonics transducer. It hits a, an object, either liquids or solids. It reflects that back off, so it's like an echo, and then it comes back to the transducer. So we then get a signal, and that's a signal going vertically. It's not perfectly straight going up. Depending on the technology, it will be narrower, which you'll see as we go through this presentation. Once we've locked onto that, there's, there's some sort of window, uh, uh, and again, Siemens call that the echo lock window, but that's there to, to ensure that if all of a sudden you get uh, an echo um, two meters in front of that, it doesn't jump to that echo straight away. So if you've got a fill in level, it should fill up gradually and the window will, will track that change. So that's what we have. And then you can see this red line. So um, again, Siemens call that the time varying threshold. But basically, anything below that red line is not analysed within um, uh, the scoring mechanism uh, of, of the, uh, how to, to lock onto the true echo. So think of it as a filter. So straight away, it filters out the noise floor. And it goes along and anything blue that protrudes that red line is then scored on different algorithms. And some of those will be the height of the echo, the area of the echo above the red line, and whether that's the first or the last echo. So that's a, a look at the, the echo uh, profile. I hope you understand it a bit more. But the next stage is, unfortunately, within our process, the strength of the signal coming back is not always the same. and 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 all technologies are affected by this. Um, some of them uh, are less severe than others, but the a signal can get attenuated. I mean, it can get attenuated as well from the actual device aging. So let's um, look at that trend there. We can see the signals getting smaller. That could be because of dust, steam, foam, whatever. If our red line is fixed, then we have a problem with our signal going below that red line and it's no longer analyzed as an echo, an echo because we've told it anything below the red line to ignore. The red line needs to be dynamic and it moves 
with the change in process conditions in your vessel and that's really important um, and you if you don't have that then a lot of the times uh, some prime examples condensation um, is, is, a, is a big one uh, build up on the face um, foam is, an, is another one attenuates the signal and you'll lose the signal altogether so that's the overview of the echo profile so let's start looking at some some real life echo profiles from from our example we're going to take a look at the, uh, the echo profile from the ultrasonic level device which is con connected in the man cave so you can see on the right hand side the joists the joists are about 600 mil apart we're missing the, f the first few joists um, purely because the beam angle that's coming out of this hasn't um, travelled far enough for it to hit these first two beams. So we're not actually seeing um, the, the first two. It's the third beam that we're picking up. Then each one of these beams is about 600 mil apart. Um, there is an opening on this one where it opens up into to the roof space. Uh, so it sort of makes sense why these this this one is attenuated um, and then we have the wall at the far end so if we have a look at what we've learned so far the blue signal is our echo coming back this is our noise floor so we can see that our noise floor is about 10 decibels you can see the, the units on the left hand side then we have distance and then we have the true echo here is our echo lock window and then we have an echo marker to say where it's picked up on 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 that um, so we have the signal strength and we also have the confidence so this this particular signal isn't brilliant it's not bad but it could be improved and one of the ways to improve it is to shape around these blue what we call false echoes and you can do that um, automatically or what I'm going to just show you now just as an exercise you don't have to do manual but we're going to do a little bit of um, uh, manual TVT shaping so here we have um, standard feature for Siemens level devices manual TVT shaping now it's extremely rare that you have to do this but I'm, I'm just showing you this as, as part of a training exercise so remember what we said the the echoes are scored above the red line and they're done on height area and whether they're first second or third or last um, so what we have to do is increase the score of the true echo which is this last one and decrease the, the score of these because at the moment the overall score is shared amongst these now, to shape we just move our point I think you've got about uh, you can see there 40 points 42 points on the curve and we can manually lift the red line And the important thing is when you've done this shaping the, the red line even though you've done it it's still not fixed it's still dynamic so that's all we're doing so I'm going to shape this red line um, and then we'll have a look at what it does to our score so remember we had a score of 8 and we're going to try and increase that score by making these echoes more uncertain and our true echo more certain. So as you can see, I've done some very basic, if not messy shaping, um, just to, to, to prove a point. Now, when you look at the, the algorithm, we're looking here at the largest echo, which is the amplitude and the area 
okay so we can't affect the amplitude of the echo that's the signal coming back that's how well it's bouncing off the the material level um, we can't affect where the echo appears in the list what we can affect by moving this red line is the area of the the echo and that's what we're we're doing here by moving that red line okay so it was just to show you it's all about the scoring mechanism behind this algorithm and how much of the signal is above the the red line so what we're going to have a look at next is the signals before we put the obstacles in place compared to those after um, but just a little bit of a reminder um, of, of what we're actually looking at I'm going to show you the the test layout next here I am in the man cave and um, I just wanted to give you an idea of what the radar and the ultrasonic device is trying to see so at the moment the camera is pointing at me and this here this wall is um, the target that we're trying to see so I'm going to try and give you an idea of what we're trying to see so this is our path hello <laughs> to the radar past the obstacles so physically we are struggling to actually see the radar it is behind the first obstacle and you can just see it coming into view there so if i get back in line i can no longer see it so it is a bit of a challenge but some things we need to be aware of with radar radar works off a dielectric constant well this material here hasn't got a high dielectric constant there is a small amount of um, electronics inside but not much um, and this net as you can see it that that's not very conductive there are some small bits of metal inside but really not much um, yes put the fireman sam umbrella there but again it's not very conductive the challenge really is this this ladder trying to get past that ladder to see the back wall um, now ultrasonics it's a different challenge because ultrasonics is looking for an echo a reflection off products so some of these they're not going to give us too much of an echo back but what they will do is prevent the echo coming through and going back at its full strength so we'll have a look at the before and after echo profiles and i'll go through some of the things that you can do to help you see that back wall we will start with the lu240 which has a 10 degree beam angle and as you can see Without the obstacles, this device is already struggling a little bit without me doing anything out of the box. Um, have a confidence of zero, and, but a good, relatively good echo strength. I would expect it really to be up in the 80s. And that's because the signal is bouncing off all of these joists uh, and um, it looks like I've got there's a bit of shelving at the bottom of my back wall which I haven't seen in a video maybe it's picking up on that out of the box the LU240 needs a little bit of help but we have to remember we do have transducers with narrower beam angles and really this is installed quite close to, to this structure so now we'll have a look at the, the radar, the Citrans LR110. And this device is performing extremely well with all these obstacles. In fact, there's only 
one of the obstacles potentially out of all of them that's creating a larger echo and that's the aluminium steps you can see a slight attenuation in the confidence and a slight movement in the uh, actual distance value but um, considering what's been put in front of it um, a three or four mil movement is is absolutely fantastic and at the moment this little radar is looking very very good we're back looking at the LU240 ultrasonic device now with all the obstacles uh, in the way and we we've got a slight increase on on some of these the one actually up closer is is the one that's causing us the biggest problem and because that is there it's attenuating the signal uh, and the far end signal is getting attenuated the most but it's not the end of the day for this device we're going to have a look at something called auto false echo suppression so if we go sorry to jump around if we go back to our device our true level starts at 4.5 meters if we go to the auto false echo suppression wizard set our so everything before 4.5 meters we're classing as false echoes and fixed obstructions so that procedure is now complete all we have to do is take a new measurement here you have the echo profile after we've done the auto false echo suppression and you can see it's moved the red line above all the obstacles enabling us to lock on to the correct level now I quite often get asked what happens when this signal travels up into this red zone um, the beauty of uh, ultrasonics is as this gets closer it's actually going to get higher in amplitude and stronger because it's got less distance to travel and the more obstacles our level goes past the more signal we're getting back because less of it is being absorbed by the obstacles so the closer that we get to to the transducer the bigger the signal so as we start getting up we should see this double in size and and then you know these false echoes really pale into in, insignificance so there you have it uh, an overview of um, echo processing and the results of our uh, uh, non-contact level assault course with the various obstacles we put in the way both technologies work the ultrasonic device required an auto force echo suppression learn but the radar um, performed very well um, but we would expect it in this case a narrower beam angle um, and a lot of the obstacles had virtually no dielectric constant for it to, to reflect back up but all that being said it did cope very well getting past the the ladders at the bottom end and just seemed to be on phased by that obstacle so i hope you found that useful thanks for tuning in and um, please if if you've got time register and click that bell button to to get notifications of future video releases thanks for listening